you probably know about MVVM, MVC and perhaps even TCA. But today, let's explore a completely new architecture for iOS apps that could prove to be super helpful in iOS 17 and forward. You see, with iOS 17, Apple is introducing more ways for users to interact with your app. Before, people would usually open your app, navigate to the screen they currently need and then do some action there. That might not be how things will work in the future. Because Apple is now introducing new ways for users to run your code without having to navigate through your app's user interface. And luckily, they also gave us developers new tools for that. It's pretty simple. Here are two examples that I think are free wins if you adopt this new Vim architecture. Interactive widgets and the action button on iPhone 15 Pro. Both of these technologies are built on top of a single newish framework called AppIntents. AppIntents allow us developers to take a piece of logic and make it independent of views, view models or any other specific place in our app. They are now their own self-contained piece of logic that lives in an AppIntent struct. To execute that logic, we just create our app intent and call the perform function. This is exactly how code is run in interactive widgets, for example, using the all new button initializer that takes in an intent. You can learn more about interactive widgets in this video. And since all the action button on iPhone 15 does is executing shortcuts, which internally uses intents as well, this is another thing your app will support almost automatically. So let me introduce you to this new architecture. Vim stands for View Intent Model and it's actually super simple. We start by creating some kind of UI using SwiftUI. I've already prepared a super simple screen here, but this could be anything you want your app to look like. Now let's take this button for example. I wanted to create a new entry in my list of favorite foods. My app uses Swift data to store data. Since I already anticipated supporting widgets with this app, I made sure to create an app group so all my data is shared between the targets. I can now create an app intent, which I also already prepared for you just to save some time, tell it about the food's name and let the button do the rest. This was super simple to set up and we have a very clean call site here in our UI code. But we don't just execute logic when buttons are pressed. We can also use app intents in other places of our app, like the task view modifier that runs asynchronous code when our view appears on the screen or a value changes. The only difference is that after creating our app intent and giving it the necessary parameters, we also have to call the perform function on it. Perform is an async throwing function, so we need to make sure we can handle any potential errors. Now, without much other setup, we are able to also support interactive widgets, the action button and other places like Spotlight Search with our app intents. Watch this video next if you want to learn more about architectures for iOS 17 and beyond.